So this time we're going to handle um, user values, which we've done in a previous video when we were doing our like manual binding. But um, now we've got our um, runtime type information. Uh, we're going to do the same thing again. It isn't going to be too much different before. We just have to make sure that we don't interfere with the runtime typing um, when we're mapping these, binding these native types to Lua. So really what we want to get to is, uh, uh, if you remember from the previous video, a user value is something that we allow uh, the person writing the script to store just random values onto a user datum. So a user datum in Lua is just a piece of memory that's managed by Lua. So it's not a table. So you can't just put a value onto it. So they, they introduce something called a user value, which is just another table that's associated with it that allows you to store values. But we we because we're doing our own binding here, we have to handle being able to return that type correctly, depending on what you've asked for. So the situation here is that uh, we want it so that Let's imagine we've got this strange value that um, someone has actually um, uh, put on this sprite object. This doesn't exist on the native type. The native type only has a, an X and a Y. There it is. It has a sprite X and Y and the sprite X and Y are registered there. So there is no ZZZ value. So what we want to be able to do first thing is because we're just we're handling reading values off, off this uh, uh, native type that we've bound. We want to be able to read that that value and make sure that if it's a if it's a user value that we return it correctly. Um, so currently, I think we left ourselves with a to do. So this shouldn't work. Yeah, to do need to check to see if zzz is a user value of sprite. So let's handle that first. So we're handling the reading before we're doing the writing, but that's because we've got we've currently handled the index user data method, which is what gets invoked when we're trying to read something. So let's handle that first because we've already got the setup here for this. So we go through, we, we, we look at the type, we find out if the, if the name of the thing we're trying to access is a method. If so, we call the method. Uh, we find out if it's a property, like if it's that X or, or Y value that we set on the sprite. If it is, then we return that to Lua. If it's not, then we're going to return the user value. So uh, if it's not a method or, whoa, we can't spell. If it's not a method or property, then return the user value. So this, this to do says we need to check, but we don't actually check. We're, we're assuming that at this point, that if it isn't one of these first two, we're going to give you the value out. We're going to give you the data out of the user value table, um, which might be nil because maybe that value hasn't been set. And in this, in this example that we're doing first, it hasn't, but that's fine because nil is the correct thing to return in that instance. Um, so all we got to do, uh, we use the get user value um, function to uh, retrieve the uh, user value, the, the table which is uh, contains the user values, and it wants the index um, of the uh, user datum that the user the user value is associated with, and you can see here that uh, we've checked here that it's it's the first thing on the stack, so. We want to get that user value, so that puts on the stack the um, the table that contains our user values, um, and then we want to we want to push the value that we're trying to access. So that'd be like the name, the field, like the zzzz in this case. Um, so we want to push that value. So where's that on the stack? So I've got to check there that it's at minus one, which is the top of the stack, but. I've already just pushed something on there. So that minus one changes here. So let's just access that in a different way. Um, this thing here, let's, this can be accessed like, like this, because the bottom of the stack is the user data. When we call this method, the index meta method. Uh, and the second thing on the stack is the name of the field that we're trying to access. So we, we can access it like that instead. It's probably a bit easier to do it that way. And that that's the same thing there. We can just change that to a two. And that makes it a bit easier down here because we push on the user value, then we push on the name of the field, and then we do uh, we do get table on that. Because remember, the, the user value is just a table. There's nothing different about it. And that is at minus one, minus two. So we do that, um, and we say we're returning one thing out of the user table. Remember, it will always be one thing because if the value's not there, it'll still be null, uh, sorry, nil, I believe. So we'll always be returning one thing from this, even if it's nil. So that handles the case where 
the the non-native property can be stored and returned um, in this value. Let's just see if that still runs because we have ch uh, changed the code just slightly above. So it seems to be fine, but we can't see any evidence of that working yet um, because what we did was we tried to read a value that just didn't exist yet. So what we really want to handle is we want to handle being able to write that value as well. So we want to be able to write the user value into this table. Um, so in this case, let's say we want to be able to, the, the person writing the script wants to store some extra information onto this. So they want to store this random value and later on they might read it back. So this won't work because we haven't handled what happens when we try and write to something that doesn't exist yet. And you can see here, we're trying to attempt to index this sprite MT. So that's the meta table of sprite. Um, we're attempting to do something with that that didn't exist. And um, it's because we haven't handled the new index meta method. Um, so the new index meta method will get called when you try and write to something that doesn't exist yet. And we haven't even got to that yet. So that now's a good time to add it. If we go down to the bottom on our registration. So this is the, the registration here is looping through all the classes that we have and it's setting up the binding for each one. So we're setting up our name of the class and the, the new method. And so we set up the garbage collect method there. There's the index method that we've been handling. That's the thing that calls the functions and, and stuff. And we also need the new index meta method, which we've not made yet. So I'm going to copy that so we can keep just like rinse and repeat these for adding new meta methods. Uh, it's new index. We want to pass in the type name and we'll call this new index user data if I can spell it correctly. So that will that will be the, the this will be the method, the C function that gets invoked when we try and write to something that doesn't exist on our user data. Uh, and pretty much this happens all the time because nothing exists on our user data except this new method. So there's pretty much nothing there. So this will always get called pretty much. So we need to, we'll create that and then we'll use that to write our user value as our very first step. So we'll go up here. I need to make that method. I'm going to use the, uh, I'm going to use just the top of this, copy the top of this index user data as a start because this is almost what we want. It's got the handling, the up value where we're passing in the type name and then we retrieve the type name from runtime type information. And then we do a few little checks. So let's let's use that as our basis for the new index. And let's paste that down there. We'll return no values. That might actually just stay like that. Um, this needs to be called new index. So this bit, so we, th this will get invoked when we're writing to it. So we retrieve our up value with the type information. That's all still the same. The first thing, the the index one on the stack is the user data. That's still the same. And the second thing um, is actually, yeah, the name of the native property that we are trying to index. That is still the same. And the only difference now is that there will be a third thing, which is the value we are writing. Uh, to the to the object, I suppose. Yep. So we don't need to do any check on that. That could be anything. It could be nil. It could be a string. It could be absolutely anything. But there should be something there. That's all we know at the moment. So um, this is where we'd handle doing our stuff for our um, runtime type information. But first thing we're going to handle is the user value. So we're kind of doing it in the opposite order that we did the index method. method. Um, so we probably would check to see if it's a property there. Um, and if it's not, we'll say if it wasn't a property, then set it set it as a user value. So kind of the same thing we were doing before. We're going to get the get the user value, which remember is just a table that contains stuff that we want to store on this on this user data. Um, and we want to push on the key and the value that we want to um, access in that table. If I could spell Lua, it's not too hard, but I can't appear to do it at the moment. Uh, so we're going to push that value. So we want to push the value at two because that's the name. That's like the key in the table of the thing we want to access. 
Um, and then we also want to push the value, which is the, the actual value we're writing, which should be at three. So that's the table we want to access that's going to store the information. So in the example, it will be the ZZZ Z and the value. Uh, so that will be the table we're going to store that in. That's the key, the ZZZ key. There's the value that we're going to store in ZZZZ. Wish I hadn't called it that now. And then we want to set that table. So we do Lua set table. And the table is minus one, minus two, minus three. So that should take that value that we were we were trying to set and put it into our user value, which is, let's have a look. Yeah, so we should take 42 and set it in as a user value on ZZ, ZZ on the, on the table, which is the user value of this particular sprite. So that should, in effect, um, handle our case here. We don't need this we don't need it yet um, let's see if that see if that builds so there you go so it builds and it runs and nothing's changed because we can't see the result of that so hopefully that's working let's see if we can write some Lua code with what we've got so far just to check to see if that works so we, we're, we're writing 42 into what we think is a user value and then we read back the 42 into a local um, Let's see if we can move the sprite by by that much, by 42 and 42, and then we can draw it again. So just what we've got now, we're just seeing if we can see some results um, of what we've written there. Hopefully that's working. So yeah, it looks like it moved to 5.5 five, and then 42 plus five is 47. So actually it looks like that's working correctly and that we can store extra values or well, the person writing the script can now store any old value they want onto this user table um, as well as the, and access the native stuff as well. So that's exactly what we wanted. Um, but before we leave it, let's just make sure that, let's put in a to-do here because um, we do need to handle in the future what happens if that one of those values was actually uh, a native property that they were trying to write to. So, because uh, in the new index case, like in the index case, if we look at it, where is it? We have to check to see if it's a method or if it was a property and then check the user value. When we do the new index one, we won't have to do that because, well, we won't have to do the methods because we can't write to a method anyway. So this, we don't need the equivalent of this part. We just need kind of like the, what happens if it was actually, we were actually trying to write a property on the actual native object. So that's where the code for this would go. Um, so we wouldn't need the method stuff, but we, we'd want to say, um, uh, we want to say, is this a property you were trying to access? So we've got the type info that we retrieved because we passed that through as an up value. So we do get property um, and get the property, which is this field name that we pulled out. So it would, that would be the ZZZZ. And we would say, uh, is that valid? And if it's valid, then we would retrieve the, um, the we would retrieve the native property um, instead of the user value. But the, the problem is, is that, well, we, we're not gonna write this code in this video. So we'll just put in an error here. So um, we put in a to do say to do um, uh, need to write to native property so we leave we leave ourselves with an error and that's kind of a good thing to do each time just leave yourself with something to do so this should code should still work with what we've got which it does because we're not really um, We've not changed anything there. So we're doing everything the program expects, but what happens if we did try and, because in the future, what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to do sprite uh, x equals 10 or something. So that's that public member variable, which is mapped in our native type. So there's our x that we've mapped. And uh, we, we want that to write to this native value, not to a user value. So in our case here, hopefully that throws us an error. Yeah, to do, need to write to native property on Sprite. We could get the name of the property in there. 
where is it? Uh, so new index down here. Let's get the name of the property in there just to make it a bit clearer. Because we might turn that into an error later on. Let's see if that does what we want. So I need to write native property X on type sprite. So that's pretty good. So we've kind of got our work cut out for us there. We're handling user values, we're creating them and um, reading them and writing them. And we only, in this case, uh, in the new index, we have to handle writing to a property because if it was a method, then we can't write to it. We can't write to a method, a native method. So we don't need to handle that. So this is the bit that we need to do next time. I'll just take that piece out of the script there. But that's all pretty good. So we're, we're handling user values. The, the script's getting more and more like usable, all the stuff we can do now here. So once we've got the writing the properties as well, uh, we're well on our way to having some kind of usable binding there. And again, I said this in the last video, but in not too many lines of code, we're up to about 320 now, but we've, we've got even more functionality than we had before. So that's really cool. So we'll get on with writing the properties next time.